So, I've been looking through my herbiary and doing some work on that, and I thought it'd be interesting to do a little video series maybe on foraging, uh, looking for local herbs and things that I've talked about a little bit about when I was making my herbiary, just to show you guys um, some of the purposes of herbs and things, and just generally share what I do with local plants. Mostly because this saves like a lot of money because you can just use free plants from around nature. And also it's like saves also the environment because you're not getting herbs that are potentially sourced improperly like white sage and palo santo. And also you get to just cut the air miles off of having things delivered to you. So here's my little toolbox. I'm going to talk about this now because one of the things that we talk about when we talk about harvesting herbs is obviously how we cut them and what width. So this is my bolin. It's not a sickle or um, one of the sort of sickle shaped blades that a lot of other people have. It does not have a white handle, but I use it mainly for carving candles and cutting herbs. However, it is, if I open it, ooh, very sharp, um, a little knife. I got this from a fishing supply shop when I was in uh, Cornwall in a fishing town. So that's one of the places that I would say to get it. If you're looking for a, a knife like this, it's very pretty. I like it. It has this little hole in the handle so you can hang it on a string and wear it around your neck if you don't have pockets, which is very handy. However, going out in public with a knife like this presents some problems. So we're going to talk about just the legal uses of knives. Now, in the UK, you are allowed to carry a knife for a good reason. And we'll get into what those reasons are in a minute. If it has a blade that is under three inches long. Uh, this has a blade of two and a half inches. I've just measured it. But I would still not be allowed to carry this in public. And that is because it has a fixed blade, which means that once it's folded out, it can't be folded back in without me pushing this button on the back. Uh, which makes it a fixed blade and therefore it's not legal for me to carry it out and about. Now the legal reasons that are acceptable to carry knives are that you are using it for work, you are showing someone like how to use it, instructing them in using a knife, or you are carrying it for a religious or sporting reason. So if we go over to the Gov website, uh, it gives you all the information about knives. And then gives you a list of banned ones. But here are the good reasons that I've just um, given you. You can take it also to a gallery to be exhibited. Um, you can use it for historical reenactment or theatre use. Or um, basically just the reasons that I've already given. But ultimately, if you're charged with carrying a knife, the court is going to decide if you had a good reason or not. So it's very important to know what you're carrying with you if you're going to take a knife out. If I had a pen knife uh, of the same length, uh, that is a knife which, when the blade is out, you can just like push the blade back in. It doesn't get fixed by a switch. That would probably be okay uh, as long as it was the right length. But again, cutting herbs and, and plants may not be considered a good reason to carry a knife in public. So the best option is to carry instead a small pair of scissors. These are embroidery scissors. Um, they're just like bird shaped scissors that I got from eBay. But these will cut basically leaves uh, and thin twigs if you need to cut things. You could also use a small pair of secateurs uh, if you needed to cut something a bit thicker, like a, a bramble bush. But these are generally okay. Obviously, they have a very short blade and uh, you're going to get in much less trouble for carrying something like this. So those are the tools that I use. There's also um, a lot of rules around foraging, like what plants you can and cannot take. The ones that I take tend to be the ones that are classed as invasive or as weeds, so there aren't really rules against cutting them. Uh, I do check before I go out if, for example, I'm going to be taking something that is a little bit more specialised, that's not just a common weed. Um, so you should always do that and make sure that you're not taking anything endangered. And also you should check to make sure that you're not taking like the whole plant or most of the plant, therefore leaving the, the mother plant to die. And um, that's just good common sense because then you can come back year on year and have a little bit more of the plant without decimating it entirely. Now, most of the plants I'm going to be talking to you about are not 
dangerous plants. They don't really have like other plants that look like them that are dangerous. It's going to be like the very simple stuff that most people can identify. But I would advise you to do your own research if you are going to go out and pick things. Make sure that you can identify them properly and that they are not dangerous. I'm also not a herbalist or herb professional and will not give, be giving you any advice about the herbal uses of plants, just the magical uses. And before you use anything topically or in an incense, make sure that you absolutely 100% for sure know what it is and know that it's not harmful. So with all that out of the way, let's go have a look for some plants. Hello! Today I've been out for a walk with my little gathering scissors as it is the end of June, beginning of July and a good time for flowering plants. Uh, so I've made a collection of objects and things. Some of them I know for sure what they are, others I'm going to try and identify with my herbiary. I made a list yesterday going through and looking at things that flower in sort of June, July time. Uh, to help me locate them and where they are found, which is all information that I got out of the original book that I cut up to make my herbiary. And self-heal was actually one of the items that I was looking for. And I think one of the first things that I found, again, don't use any of the information uh, in this video for identification of plants. Uh, this is just me sharing my method and I'm obviously not going to eat or otherwise consume anything that I've found. It's just going to be dried and put into uh, like spell sachets and things. So it's fairly low risk as far as, far as like handling these things goes. Um, but this I'm fairly confident is self-heal because it looks pretty much exactly like the picture. The leaves are the right shape. Uh, the stem is similar and the like intervals of the leaves and the flower is also quite similar. I already have some self-heal uh, dried that I've purchased, so that's what I tend to use in incense and stuff. But this looks pretty much the same. Uh, self-heal, obviously good for healing medicine, which is why I've cleverly circled the word heal. And it was widely used in herb medicine to treat wounds and stop bleeding so I've put it down as being used uh, for healing to ward off sickness for spiritual healing and to give people hope also interestingly a tea was used to sharpen the eyes for hunting so this self-heal is going to go into a bargain hunting sachet with a magpie feather so that's going to be very exciting I only took a little bits because obviously I hadn't identified things yet and wasn't sure about it but now I'm fairly confident in what this is. I'll be drying that and using it in a sachet. Next up, we have a Budlia. I didn't actually have a page in my book yet for Budlia, uh, but this is Budlia. Uh, you find it growing a lot on waste ground in cities, so it's an excellent plant to use if you are not in the countryside. This I found actually growing behind uh, like a big farm supply shop in my area it's been purposefully planted there bees love this i took like one of the smaller flowers and left all the big ones on there for the benefit of those bees but bees love buddleia uh, it's very attractive to them so obviously perfect to use in love magic and attraction because it attracts bees and butterflies and everything that loves nectar so an excellent one to use in love magic or I guess even in like money drawing magic because it attracts those the bees and they're very industrious and make lots of honey out of it. Uh, so the next thing that I found was ooh, it stuck to everything else because that is its very nature was this which is bindweed I think uh, I'm just going to find the page for that. Here we go, page 33, larger bindweed. This is actually twisted around a stick, so the stick had to come with me, although it was on a dead plant, so I feel like that's fine. Uh, again, trying to match like the leaves. The flower has wilted, but it was, again, very similar. And I think based on like the leaves that this is probably the right plant. If you know differently, if you, if you like to like teach me a little bit about plants and identifying them that would be great uh, but for the moment I'm just going off of you know this picture in the book and also other pictures that I've googled. Bindweed 
is toxic so I would not advise eating it anyway even if you think you have properly identified it it's also an invasive plant so it's okay to harvest because it's not like rare or anything everything that I picked today isn't rare or endangered in any way um, so because it grows so quickly I've put it as being good for fertility because that makes sense to me uh, but also because it can kill host plants it might be useful in workings to do with dangerous pregnancies uh, things like that to try and sort those things out also obviously with binding creating links between realms resilience uh, as if you cut or damage it, it it grows more shoots which is why i took basically the whole plant that i found not magic and spell sealing so there we go found a nice big clump of that to dry uh two other things that i found which again i don't have pictures for yet i don't think i have these thistles let's see if we actually have a page for those I did, but there's not much on it. Uh, so I took these again. These absolutely love these. So I only took two from plants that had loads on. Uh, so I didn't want to like over harvest them. They're so soft and silky on the top and then so spiny and horrifying to touch. Um, but these are good for protection, vitality, for strength and energy, spell breaking and hex breaking, healing and exorcism. Again, really good you can get these on like waste ground in cities you see these everywhere around this time of year and with the flowers they're hard to mistake and so long as you don't touch the the spiky part as long as you touch it from like below it's it's okay to handle they're not that spiky um, but they're good all-purpose ones to have around in your store cupboard especially if you have not got access to like the countryside you can find these a lot of places in the town just two more plants to go the other one that i found was i think black hole hand this is the one that i'm not sure about uh, so i took a little bit of this that i found uh, this was growing in a lane nearby it kind of looks like a nettle but with these sort of pink orchid looking flowers on and that's sort of what we had here uh, these types of uh, similar looking flowers. Again, the leaves look quite similar. So we'll see. Apparently this is meant to have a foul smell according to this. It does smell kind of like that kind of overly sweet kind of pea-like smell. So I guess that might be it. And uh, I found it growing in the right place. So I would say this is probably Black Hole Hound. This can apparently be used um, to ward off animals and wild dogs. So I guess for very specific, very specific home protection, protects from magically inflicted illnesses and healing. Um, I have only got these medicinal uses, as I've said before, just because I find it quite useful uh, to have just a sort of breakdown of those because you can often get some of the magical qualities of the plant from its medicinal uses. And then the last one I have is this plant right here, which I think is yarrow. And I'm just going to see if I can find the picture for that. Here we go, page six. Uh, so I wrote down, because I couldn't take this whole herbiary with me, I wrote down some characteristics to help me identify it. And um, that it had this like white branching flower at the top, but also these leaves that kind of looked a bit like chamomile to me. And... These do look incredibly similar and the flower looks uh, correct as well. Uh, the magical uses I have for yarrow are for divination, uh, drink tea. Obviously, if I was going to drink tea, it would be from yarrow that I had purchased or grown myself and knew what it was. In love spells, communication between loved ones, enhancing psychic powers and to cleanse yourself. But I think that's a pretty well identified one. Again, I've seen this growing so many places in towns uh, as well as in the countryside. You often get self-heal as well in grassy spots. If you see the little purple flowers like growing in lawns and stuff. So there we have it. This is my little haul for today. 
Um, it was definitely really exciting to go out and try and identify some of these plants. There are other plants that I think I would have a harder time identifying. Uh, like, for instance, vervain, which um, doesn't necessarily have any distinguishing features that I would be able to remember. Um, but some things I think it's it's worthwhile trying to gather yourself. For instance, dandelions. Pretty good thing to, to start gathering. On the other hand, henbane. Not good, because it is very, very toxic. But yeah, I've definitely enjoyed going out and finding some of these things for myself. And can't wait to get these dried and into jars so that I can use these instead of shop-bought herbs and things. Which I think is going to be a lot more fun. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see some more about identifying plants, uh, wild plants and their uses, give this video a thumbs up and uh, I can hopefully get to filming some of that allergies permitting because I can already feel my time spent outside getting to me. But in the meantime, I will see you in the next one. Bye!